Hello student my name is Kiran and I teach physics today we will be solving problems from current electricity as you know current electricity is a very important chapter you get problems uh, mainly from this chapter in your exam so let us start the problems from current electricity so let me tell you the important formulas you have to remember in order to solve the problem so there are many initially I, I will write two two at a time and I will explain the terms and I'll tell you certain nuances about the uh, formulas so that you, it will be easy in your exam when you solve okay. so first formula is the formula for current so current uh, letter I have written capital I that is equal to Q by T okay where Q is the charge so Q is the charge and T is the time careful capital Q is the charge small letter T is time and the SI unit, I will be writing the SI unit in the bracket, so please be careful. The SI unit of charge is Coulomb, symbol is capital C. And the SI unit of time is second. Now, what you have to remember here? In exam, they can give you charge. Charge, they can give you 50 Coulomb. 50 Coulomb they can give. And time, they can give you 2 minutes. They will give you... They will give the time in minutes, but the SI unit of time is second. So what you have to do is, you have to convert this minutes to seconds. As a result, it will become 120 seconds. So this value along with this value, you have to substitute in this equation. Only then you will get the correct answer. If you substitute 2 minutes and 50 coulomb, it will become 50 by 2, 25. And if you write... 25 as your answer it will be wrong so please be careful whenever you write when you substitute the value make sure that they are in SI unit second formula which I am going to tell you is about potential you will be learning a lot of things about potential in your PUC if you take science in your PUC second PUC physics mainly deals with electricity electrical properties magnetic properties and there you will be learning a lot of things about the potential okay now this potential is given by work by charge that is the amount of work done in bringing a charge from one point to another point when you have two different points you define something called potential difference but if you choose one point as infinity which is very very far then it becomes potential okay where v is potential w is work done and q is charge so w is work done And Q is charge. SI unit of work done. So SI unit of work done is joules. Some prefer telling it as joules and some tell joule, meaning is same. Okay. You can tell joule or joule, it doesn't matter. So charge again it is capital C. Now here I, am, I want to tell you one more thing. Current, which is I. SI unit is ampere. SI unit is ampere. You might have seen in your charger. If you look at your phone charger, backside it will be written ampere, milliampere, capital A. That is nothing but this current I. Similarly, here V is the potential in the SI unit of volt. Voltage, 1 volt, 2 volt, you can see here. So these are the two important formulas which you have to know from this chapter plus we have few more which I will be writing next next formula number three that is V is equal to IR now what is this formula now, you might have studied Ohm's law that is more the potential difference between two points of the conductor more current will flow okay so that is V is directly proportional to I or V normally write I is directly proportional to V so here what will happen, there is a proportionality symbol. When you remove the proportionality symbol, you get a constant. That constant is capital R, okay? Where I is current. Again, I am writing the SI unit, capital A. And R is resistance. Resistance, SI unit is important. SI, SI unit of resistance is ohm. Ohm is the resistance, resistance SI unit. 
this is the symbol this is the capital letter omega okay in greek so v is again potential again si unit is volt so be careful in exam they can give you current they can give you voltage they can ask you to calculate resistance they can give you current they can give you resistance voltage can be calculated or any any two quantities they can give you have to calculate the third quantity okay the next formula is so on what factors this resistance r depends on if you consider a conductor let me draw one conductor so normally when i when i tell conductor i take a wire and what is the shape of wire normally shape of wire is cylindrical you took you take any wire observe it it is cylindrical in shape right so let me take a wire let l be the length of the wire okay now when you do the experiment you can do all all these experiments in the lab you can you take a wire change its length take a smaller wire take a bigger wire take still more bigger wire of the same material don't change the material material you don't change copper wire means increase the length of or take a longer wire decrease the length cut it little bit decrease the length okay you can change the length of the conductor similarly you have thickness you have this uh, thickness first take a vary the thickness also when you vary the thickness this section will change okay now this resistance r depends on resistance of this conductor depends on two things that is it is directly proportional to the length longer the length more will be the resistance okay next it is inversely proportional to a now what is a here here a means area of cross section area of cross section that is for example if you look at this chalk now this chalk is comparable to this uh, conductor which i have which i have okay so this is the length area of cross section is this part you can see here what is this shape this is circular this is circular similarly you can have a you can have a material uh, where it is square in shape so this is the circular shape this is the area of cross section this section okay so here a for this particular material which is a wire for this particular conductor which is a wire area is pi r square okay now depending on if you change the area of cross section if you vary the thickness its resistance will also change how they are related so directly proportional to l inversely proportional to a means if you take longer wire resistance will be more if you take thinner wire resistance will be more because it is inversely proportional and when you re remove the proportional symbol you get a constant that constant is known as resistivity i have written here when you remove the proportional sign in case of ohm's law when you remove the proportional sign you get a constant r here in this case when you remove the proportional symbol you get a constant known as a rho rho r h o okay now here rho is known as resistivity rho is known as resistivity l and a as i said l is length and a is area cross section in this area of cross section i hope this is clear next that is the last part of the formulas is that we will be learning about resistors i am pretty sure you might have uh, studied about resistors so resistors are devices which will which are used uh, whenever you want to regulate current that is if you want to decrease the amount of current they will oppose it okay they will oppose it so, and they will obstruct the flow of current normally every material you me the chalk which i am holding everything will oppose everything will have resistance okay and resistor is a device resistance is the property resistor is a device okay so here what i do is i take two resistors resistors normally this is the symbol for resistors i take two resistors in series i take two resistors in series so i take it as r1 
I take it as R2. If I have two resistors in series, what will happen to the total resistance? Okay, so that total resistance is given by, I will write it as RS, S for series. Now, this is called series, means you are holding hand to hand. This is series. Okay, series. I have two resistors R1 and R2. They are in series. What will happen to their total resistance? R1 and R2 are the resistance of resistors. Okay, so the total resistance will become R1 plus R2. You have to add the individual resistance values. If you have three, if I put one more, it will become plus R3. If you put one more, it will becomes it will become R4, R5, etc. You have to add. That's what you have to remember. Next, what I have is, I have resistor in parallel combination. When I have resistors in parallel combination, this will be the last formula which we will be learning. So if I have two resistors, resistor 1 and resistor 2, I have two resistors. Resistance is R1, resistance is R2. What will happen here? Here the total resistance, total resistance here I will take it as Rp because they are parallel, it will be R1, R2 by R1 plus R2, R1, R2 by R1 plus R2, okay. Next, what if you have 3, let me draw 3 resistors in parallel combination, so that is something like this, 1, 2, 3. R1, R2, R3. See, this equation, whatever I have written, this you can apply only when you have two resistors. If you have three resistors, you can't write R1 into R2 into R3 by R1 plus R2 plus R3. No, you can't do that. It is only for when you have, it's only when you have two resistors. If you have three resistors, it is better to use this formula. That is, 1 by Rp is equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus 1 by R3. When you use this formula and simplify, you get Rp. Here also, the actual formula is 1 by Rp is equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2. But when you simplify, you get like this. Okay. But it is better to remember this formula. Okay. This is good if you want to solve fast. But you can't apply this formula when you have 3. You can't write R1 into R2 into R3 by R1 plus R2 plus R3. It will be wrong. It will be wrong. So that is why whenever you have 3, it is better to use this formula. But if you have 2 resistors, it is better to use this formula. Okay. Now this is the total resistance values when 2 resistors uh, are in series and parallel. This is for parallel and the earlier one was for series. Next, let us solve the problems related to the formulas which I had given. So, so, the two problems related to the first two formulas which I had given. Okay. So, the first one is a current of 0 0.1 ampere is drawn by a bulb in 5 minutes. So, there is a bulb and it will take 0 0.1 ampere of current Okay, in 5 minutes. So, what are the things given? You have to write it then. You have to write when you solve any problem. Remember, in future, when you solve any problems in physics, what you have to do is first Read the problem carefully. Read the problem. Underline what is given. Okay. Don't normally we tell not to underline, not to put uh, any mark on the question paper. Do not underline on the question paper, but just underline in your mind that what is given and write it on your paper first. Okay. So here current of 0 0.1 ampere. So current is given. Symbol for current. So I will solve it here. So this is the solution. Current is given, that is 0 0.1 ampere. So, I equal to 0 0.1 ampere. Again, A means ampere, unit of current. Is drawn by a bulb in 5 minutes. Minutes. Time is given, T. T is equal to 5 minutes. But, you have to remember one thing. Here, time is in minutes. But, the SI unit of time is seconds. Right? So, minutes, you have to convert, to, convert it into seconds. So, 1 minute is 60 seconds. So, therefore, T is equal to 5 into 60. That is 300 seconds. Okay. Current is given. Time is given. Done. 
find the amount of electric charges. Okay, now let me underline amount of electric charges. So charge Q you have to find out. Charge Q you have to calculate. So you have to look for an equation. Again, these are the things given. After you write what is given in the problem, you have to analyze and you have to think of a formula which will relate all these. So the formula which which will relate all these is nothing but so we have again remember one thing whenever you solve any uh, problem make sure make sure that you write something it's not just mathematics yes maths is fun but you have to write little bit of english also so please remember that so we have we have i is equal to q by t we have i is equal to q by t i is given 0.1 q we have to calculate t is 300 okay so let me substitute. So i is equal to 0 0.1. Q we have to calculate. I will write as it is. T is 300. i is equal to q by t. i is 0.1. T is 300. Cross multiply. So therefore q is equal to 300 into 0 0.1. Okay. So 300 into 0 0.1. When you do that, your answer will be q is equal to 300 into 0 0.1. So 0 0.1 is nothing but 1 by 10. Okay. 0 0.1 is nothing but 1 by 10. 0, 0 will cancel. So your answer is 30 coulomb. Why coulomb? Because it is a charge. Always remember whenever you write any quantity in physics or in science, you have to give the unit of it. Units are very important. Okay. So make sure that you write coulomb. Okay. Next problem is how much work is done. Again, how much work is done? So work you have to calculate. What is the symbol for work? It is W. Done in moving a charge. So you are moving a charge. You, you have to calculate how much work is done. And you are moving a charge of 3 coulomb. So you can see here. How do I know it is a charge? One, they have given. Second, C. C is coulomb. Okay. Coulomb is the SI unit of charge. So charge is given. So that is 3 coulomb from one point to another point. So you take any two random point, one is here, another one is here. You are moving the charge from here till here or from here till here. It doesn't matter which two points you take. You are moving the charge between these two points and this is a charge. Okay. Now you question you can ask how you can move from here to here. You consider a conductor. You consider a conductor. Okay. One, one point of the conductor is here. Another point is here. Okay. You can do that. Next from one point to another point having a potential difference of 15 volt. So potential difference is V. So remember one thing when here whenever I write V it means potential difference. But sometimes we use potential. Sometimes it is potential difference. Sometimes it is potential. What is the case? Simple. Remember when we talk about potential when we have one point at infinity. Okay. When we take one point at infinity we use potential. But when we have two points which are where one point is not at infinity, when you have two nearby points, we tell potential difference. Okay. Now here we have potential difference V that is 15 volt. Again, look for the formula which will connect all three. Okay. So let us write. So we have, make sure that you write bit of English also. So we have, so the formula is V is equal to W by Q. Potential is nothing but the work done in moving a charge from infinity at a given point. Right. Now let us apply. So V is equal to 15 volt. So you need not write uh, volt when you substitute. W I have to calculate. Q is 3 coulomb. Again, bef even before you substitute, make sure whether they are in SI unit or not. Volt potential, volt is the SI unit, correct? Charge coulomb is the SI unit. If they give some other unit, normally they don't give here. If they give some other unit, remember, you might have solved problems where they give speed in kilometer per hour, but you convert it to meter per second. So here also, make sure that all the units are in SI unit. Okay. So I have substituted, now cross multiply. So W is nothing but 15 into 3. I will do on the other side. W is equal to 15 into 3. 15 into 3 is 45. W is equal to 45. What is the SI unit? Work done has the same unit as energy. Okay. Energy SI unit is joule. So here also you have to write it as joule. 
okay so these are the two problems related to the first two formulas so we have solved two problems till now we will be solving more especially on series and parallel combination of resistors in the next class okay so until then keep learning keep studying and keep working out thank you